All right, this is Ken Roosevelt. We're talking about choosing the correct distribution for making inferences about the population mean. Now, um, the book on page 371 offers this chart up here and this explanation. Uh, let's see, they're right here. Okay, and I copied and pasted them. And as you read through it, you might find this explanation pretty useful. I prefer, I'm going to break it down for you on another page, or maybe down here. Here's what you need to know. Okay, if you want to read through that, you can do that. It's in there. It's helpful. But I'm going to categorize it. If you are sampling from a normal population, so from a normal population, two things can happen. You'll either know the standard deviation, so if sigma is known, then you use z. Okay, pretty straightforward. If sigma is unknown, you use t unless n is greater than or equal to 30. Okay, if the sample size is larger, are, are equal to 30, you can use Z. So I'll put Z. Okay, so one more time. From a normal population, if you're sampling from a normal population and sigma is known, you use Z. If sigma is not known, you use T unless N is greater than or equal to 30, then you still use Z. Okay, if you are sampling from a non normal population. <clears throat> well, once again, you have some options, but I'm going to start with the, the n condition here. If n is greater than or equal to 30 and sigma is known, then you use z. If n is greater than or equal to 30 and sigma is unknown, you can use z, but t also works. Okay? <clears throat> and lastly, if n is less than 30, and again, this is from a non-normal population, if you don't know um, sigma, if it's from a non-normal population, it's basically no deal. All right, no deal. Z, nope. T, nope. Because in order for you to use um, a T for N less than 30, you have to know that it comes from a normal population. Okay, so these are basically your rules. So if you write those down, you should be okay. Now let's go to a problem. <clears throat> now Alex is a little finicky in this, and you'll learn it as you go. But, all right, well, anyway, suppose we want to estimate the mean PCB ooh, level in white croaker fish in San Francisco Bay. Uh, the sample we select has a mean of 629 parts per million and a standard deviation of 55 parts per million. So this is from the sample. So this is not mu. This is X bar. This is not sigma. This is S. From each of the following sampling scenarios, determine which test statistic is appropriate to use when making inference statements about the population mean. <clears throat> now, just because Alex is finicky, I might get this wrong at first, because I'm trying to remember there's a certain one on here that I would say Z, but they always say, oh, you can use Z or T, but we'll figure out which one that is. Well, first one, it says, the sample size, the sample has a size of 19, and it is from a population with a distribution about which we know very little. Well, then, it's unclear, isn't it? Because unless we know that it's normally distributed, we cannot use um, T. 
And because we don't know that it's not normally distributed, we can't say definitely that we can't. So it's unclear. Okay. This one, it says it has a sample size of 16, and it is from a normally distributed population with an unknown standard deviation. Okay, so we're looking in the normal category, but it's unknown, standard deviation. So that is T. Okay, if you don't remember, let's look. From a normal population, if sigma is unknown, it's T unless our sample size is what? Greater than or equal to 30. Okay, going back. This one here has a sample size of 85. It's from a non-normally distributed with a known standard deviation. Now, even though you could do this with a T because the standard deviation is known, we always go with Z. Okay, because Z is going to be more accurate. Um... And the sample has, this one number four, the sample has a size of 17. It is from a normally distributed population with a known standard deviation. When it's known and normal, that's a Z. So there we go there. And the last one, the sample size is 90, and it's from non-normally distributed population. So notice they didn't tell me that we know the standard deviation, they didn't tell me that we don't know it. So this is that one where they don't tell you anything about the standard deviation, but you have a big sample size. This is the one that you could use either. Okay, When they don't tell you about the standard deviation, but you have the small sta uh, sample size, then it's unclear. But down here, because the sample size is sufficiently large, we could use either Z or T. It doesn't matter whether we know sigma or not. Uh, if we do know it, though, the answer is Z, okay? Anyways, so that is that one. Uh, maybe we'll do one more. Let me do a little time check here. Yeah, we have time for one more. So I'm going to practice again, and we'll read through these. None of this information up here really matters. What matters is down here in the box. So focus in on that with me. The sample has a size of 19. It's from a normally distributed population with an unknown standard deviation. Because it's normal and unknown, it is what? It's T. Okay. The sample size is 105. It's from a non-normally distributed population. Because they're not telling me the standard deviation is known. They're not telling me it's unknown. Uh, you can get away with either of these guys. Okay. I would say Z still but whatever. Um, the sample, this is the one they're finicky about though. Even though I would say Z, they would say you can use Z or T because they don't tell you anything about the standard deviation. Okay, the sample has size 95 and it is from a non-normally distributed population with an unknown, oh with a known standard deviation. Because the standard deviation is known and even though it's non-normal, we know that when you sample, um, when you have a sample size of over 30, then the uh, distribution of sample means is approximately normally distributed. So it doesn't matter that this is non-normal, because uh, the distribution of sample means will still be normal. So we can use Z here, okay? Because it's a known standard deviation. Number four, the stand, uh, the sample has a size of 15. It's from a population about which we know very little. Well, that's the unclear one. And this last one, sample size 10, normally distributed, known standard deviation. If it's known, it's C. Known and normal is always C. Next. Very good practice again. Um, I'm not going to show you as I practice again, but uh, I'm going to add that to my pie in a moment. That's good for this video.